Limited companies. When should you use them? When shouldn't you use them? What are the drawbacks? What are the benefits? Specifically with regard to investing in property. Well, let's start with the basics. Buy to let investing officially properly started in 1996. Many people think it's been going on for umpty tumpty years. It hasn't. There was a small group of professional landlords that have been doing it for years and years and years. But the commercial high street version of buy to let investing is very much a 1990s phenomenon because that's when the term buy to let investing was actually coined and that's when the first buy to let mortgages were offered uh, to the general public because before that it was essentially commercial money, commercial lending only. So having got the history lesson out of the way, why did so many people, or have so many people over the last few years in particular focused on buying property in a limited company. Well in a nutshell it comes back to the George Osborne, uh, let's call them reforms to use a polite word, where he introduced all kinds of anti-landlord taxes. And the one most people have heard about is called Section 24. Now what Section 24 does is says if you're a higher rate taxpayer, 40-45%, which of course most landlords are by definition, you can't reclaim all of your interest relief. Is a huge reason to invest in property through a limited company so that you can claim all of your interest relief. Now this assumes we're talking about a normal buy to let, a house for example, or a flat, an apartment. If you're investing in other kinds of property, commercial property, service accommodation, that would fall outside the remit of all the anti-landlord taxes. So just be a little bit careful that you don't jump to the assumption that I'm investing in property, therefore I should have a limited company. But let's proceed in this video on the basis that you are gonna buy a regular buy to let, a house or an apartment, and you're gonna rent it out to a family on a tenancy agreement. What are the advantages in that context? Well, as I've already said, you would, if you're a higher rate taxpayer, you would save money with regard to, you can claim mortgage interest relief as an expense, which is a huge thing. And that will make your property business significantly more profitable as long as you've got mortgages. Of course, if you're unencumbered or you don't have mortgages, then it won't make any difference. The second reason why investing through a limited company is good for most people is that corporation tax, although now it's up at 25%, it's still a lot less than the 40% or 45% that you would pay again if you're a high rate or a very high rate taxpayer. The first stage tax, let's call it that, corporation tax, is less than higher rate or very high rate. But low rate taxpayers, 20% taxpayers, income taxpayers, of course, are now below the rate of corporation tax. So just a little watch out there. If you're taking your profits through a limited company, well, there's no national insurance to pay, for instance. So national insurance can be a lot of money if you're a high rate or a very high rate taxpayer. Third reason is that when you want to take money out of a limited company, you can take money out of a limited company very, very tax efficiently. Until a few years ago, you could take out £5,000 per person dividend, completely tax-free. Then it went down to 2000 and I suppose at some point it could go down to nothing at all. After that, the next roughly £40,000 that you take out is going to be subject to dividend tax at around about the 7 7.5%. All these numbers change slightly, so if it's changed in the budget, since I recorded this, you need to go and check out the latest budget stats. But just follow the logic. Let's say you make £50,000. In fact, no, let's say you make £100,000 profit in a company and it's two people, I don't know, me and my wife, me and Annika, that own this company. You've got £100,000 of profit after all of your expenses and mortgage costs and mobile phones and all the other things you should be charging to the company. Corporation tax on a £100,000 profit is £25,000. It's 25%. So now you've got £75,000 of post-tax profit retained in the company. And if you decided that, well, actually, I just want to use that money to carry on building my property portfolio, well, there's no further tax. Well, okay, we live in Monaco now, but if, if Annika and myself were still in the UK, we'd be very much 45% taxpayers. So our tax bill on that would be £45,000, not £25,000 in this £100,000 example. Plus, we'd have to pay national insurance. So let's just call it 50%. Your tax bill is halved straight away because you're paying £25,000 in corporation tax instead of £50,000 in income tax and national insurance. But it doesn't end there because if Annika and myself then wanted to take out dividend from the company to extract that £75,000 dividend, we'd have 
a small amount that's completely tax free uh, and let's say 70k we'd have to pay 7% on so that's about £4,900 so if I add together let's call it five if I add together the 25,000 of corporation tax and the £5,000 of dividend tax we're at £30,000 versus if we'd have done it in our own name we'd have been at £50,000 of income tax plus national insurance and of course we wouldn't have been able to claim the mortgage costs as an expense so we wouldn't have made that much money in the first place so round numbers at the 100k mark with two people ish you're going to make roughly twice as much profit so those are some of the main reasons but if i focus in a little bit on some specific things you could do let's say we were going to go and buy a million pound property we were going to convert it from a care home to a residential property or properties and we were then going to sell them so we're going to buy some sort of commercial property, I don't know, pub, care, home, something, convert it to residential, and then sell some sort of big, massive residential home. And this isn't quite as theoretical as it sounds because Aniko and myself have done this a number of times. And let's say the end value of the property was two million pounds. So we've bought it for a million, I don't know what it is, let's say a care home. We've spent some money on it, three, four hundred thousand, and we've sold it for two million. Now, the purchaser of a two million pound residential property, I don't know if you know this or not, but the top rate of stamp duty or land and building transaction tax or whatever the equivalent is in your part of the UK is let's focus on England is 12% just the stamp duty at the top end is 12% and of course you get the first bit for nothing and then the next bit for a couple of percent and it builds up but let's just ignore those stage payments just to make this comparison easy just going through the stamp duty numbers with you 12% of two million pounds stamp duty is 240,000 pounds but let's say you didn't do that. Let's say this was an investment property, a you know, top end investment property, and you bought it in a limited company. And what you didn't do is sell the property, you sold the company. Now suddenly, the stamp duty isn't on the property, it's on the sale of the company. And stamp duty on shares is half a percent. One percent of two million is 20 grand. So half a percent is 10 grand. So suddenly, instead of paying 240,000 pounds in stamp duty, the purchaser needs to pay £10,000 in stamp duty because he's not buying a property, he's buying a company that owns a property. So I could sit here in this chair on this lovely balcony looking out of the Mediterranean. This is my home in Monaco, by the way. I could probably talk for two or three days about the various benefits of buying properties through limited companies. Drawbacks, number one, you need to know what you're doing. We can get it awfully wrong. You can have the wrong kind of company doing the wrong thing. You could just have a very, very, you, you could have a 50,000 pound flat in a cheap area and the cost of running the company could be higher than the tax savings. You could you could go to an accountant in London and say, set me up a limited company. And they say, certainly sir, that'll be 4,000 pound. Oops, you could do it yourself for 12 quid. So there's all sorts of drawbacks that you need to be aware of they're not difficult to manage, but then, you know, nothing's difficult if you know what you're doing, is it? So my suggestion, if you like some of the facts and figures that I've mentioned in this Money Matters video, is learn more about it. Just get yourself along to Wealth Through Property. Uh, sign up for a two-day course with us, with our fantastic coaches, trainers, fantastic Touchstone team, and just quiz them. We always talk on Wealth Through Property about the right kind of structure, whether it's a limited company, an LLP. Uh, and we've helped tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of people now actually, to develop that first level knowledge of the ins and outs of buying a property through a limited company or not, depending on what they're trying to do. So what's that gonna cost you? It's gonna cost you a couple hundred, a few hundred pounds, and it's gonna cost you two days of your life, which I think is a fantastic investment because even if you ended up a few years from now in my sort of couple example that makes a hundred thousand pounds profit through their property business and you save half your tax well in my example there that was twenty five thousand pounds a year and that's a fairly modest example many many of our students have gone on to do a lot more than that i would appreciate it if you would subscribe hit the notification bell maybe tell one or two mates about it and just share the knowledge share the love that would be very kind my name's Paul Smith, Touch and Education. You've been wonderful. I've been Paul. See you next time.